it is only when we silence the sounds of busy day-to-day -day existence that we can hear the whispers of nature. As I travel solo again, this trip being fueled on little sleep, long drives and dark camps, waking up to see the first light strike the rugged ranges makes it all worth it. I venture into the great southern region of Western Australia and explore new places and climb to new heights. Absorbing the endless horizons, I can't help but feel something is missing as the rest of my family tends to commitments at home. Watching the world pass by underneath, my mind begins to think of adventure to come, leading us to the pristine southern coastline. Pushing our way through narrow bush tracks, we discover one of the best beach camps I've ever experienced. Only those who risk going too far can possibly find out how far they can go. It's 6 a.m. here on a Friday morning and we're in the beautiful Great Southern of Western Australia. We're just north of Albany at the moment, just outside the Stirling Ranges National Park. So the journey for me started yesterday, finishing a late shift early hours of the morning. I had a few hours sleep. We hopped in the car and we drove the 750 kilometer drive from Kalgoorlie down to where we are camped tonight. So in true exploring Oz fashion, we arrived at camp again late at night. I tell you what, we're definitely getting our value worth out of those lights. We are very fortunate with the sunset last night. Managed to go past some, uh, some of the fields in the wheat belt region and the sun bouncing off those, uh, those wheat fields was just unbelievable. So I got some really nice photos of that and uh, pretty lucky to uh, be passing that area during that time of day. I uh, found this piece of crown land just outside the National Park last night. I was pretty fortunate. I couldn't see where I was last night, but I could hear a lot of sheep in the background, so I'm assuming I'm somewhere near some farms. But I tell you what, it's a beautiful area. I haven't heard or seen anyone last night. Very, very peaceful, very quiet. However, it's very cold this morning, uh, but overall, we're very lucky to be here. So let's uh, grab some breakfast, let's cook up, and then we're gonna head out to the Sterling Ranges National Park and see if we can't go and climb Bluff Knoll. So when you're visiting this area, you do have to pay a small national park fee. Uh, so obviously I've just chosen a one day fee, so we've got our ticket here, and off we go heading up to uh, Bluff Knoll. As you can probably tell from this uh, dad bod here, I'm no experienced or regular hiker, but when we're doing something like this, you wanna make sure you're prepared. This is a, a fairly decent hike. It's uh, only 3.1 kilometers, but obviously it's quite steep and it's gradient. And it's gonna take a couple of hours um, at minimum, but they recommend leaving between three and four hours. So just be prepared when you do things like this. You don't have to go overboard, um, but just keep a, a few things in a pack that you take with you just to make sure you can survive if you have to uh, a night. Um, this uh, Sterling Range National Park has recorded some fatalities um, in regards to hikers either getting lost or injuring themselves and not being 100% prepared. So we've got a few things here that's going to make our life a little bit easier. If in the worst case scenario we're stuck here overnight, we've got some communication devices here including an EPIRB which I've done a video on so it's a pretty handy to have one of them for both walking, hiking and uh, four wheel driving. We've got a uh, handheld UHF, some warmer clothing, you know, it takes plenty of water. Uh, and some snacks and whatnot as well, along with the camera gear. So make sure you're prepared. Don't just uh, jump out of your car, head up these mountains without anything on you. 
again, hopefully all going well. We'll be back down here in a few hours and all will be fine. We'll not need to use hardly any of this. However, you always prepare for that worst case scenario and then you're, uh, you're ready to go. So let's, uh, let's pack up. So it hasn't been too hard so far. It's uh, definitely steep, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but there's lots of steps and supports in place to sort of hold those rocks up at the right place. So uneven ground, definitely working up a sweat. It's only about 13 or 14 degrees at the moment, but climb definitely uh, gets the, the heart rate up, that's for sure. So let's keep on going. Bluff Knoll is one of the only places in Western Australia that receives regular snowfall in the winter months. Speaking with the locals, Bluff Knoll received a light dusting of snow as recently as last week. The small trickles of the water are the last of the melting snow winding its way off the peak. As we are walking up the side of the peak, a glance to the right at any time provides consistently breathtaking views. So like I said at the start, it's not an overly hard walk, it just continues and keeps going. It's a long walk, you definitely want to make sure you bring enough water for a few hours, that's for sure. But I'm not sure whether you can see in the background there, we're coming out to the back of the bluff now, so I'm to come up hopefully another 700 metres or so. I tell you what, I reckon there's a few people around this, this point here on the climb, just like myself, where you start the walk really motivated, fast pace, all excited to get to the top and get to this two thirds, three quarter so mark. And you're wondering how long you have to wait if you are uh, chartered a chopper to take you the rest of the way and then back down again. But, oh, i tell you what, I reckon this, all this effort is gonna make that view all that more worth it. So uh, take a quick one minute break, back on the track again. Doesn't get much better than that. Starting to get a little bit cloudy now. Gotta start making our way back down the uh, down the hill. 
hopefully going down is a little bit easier than going up. So we'll uh, get going. I want to quickly shout out to an awesome couple by the name of Adam and Jenny who I met on this trail. Adam and Jenny watch and support this channel and it was great to meet and have a chat in person. I wish you guys the best on your trip across into New South Wales. So I'll tell you what, I reckon we're maybe about halfway at the moment on the way back down. And it definitely gets warmer down closer to the ground level. Up there, 1,095 metres above sea level, it's pretty chilly. If you're going to spend any amount of time up there, it'd be worth taking a uh, jacket or something warm to wear. But the further you go down, the warmer it gets. So, uh, the cows are getting closer. Making some progress. Definitely easier on the way down. I don't think I've ever been so excited to see a relatively flat, sealed footpath before. It's a nice change. A couple hundred metres to go. Almost at the car park. What an awesome climb, eh? There we have it, guys. Back at the car now. So we left at 7.50 for the start of the walk. It's now 11.15, so not too bad. Pretty accurate with their estimates there. I took it fairly easy, and as you uh, can probably see from this, and this, Oh. I'm not the fittest guy going around, so uh, if you're pretty fit, you can do it a lot quicker. Um, but yeah, leave a few hours anyway and definitely take a whole lot of water. If you're going to spend any amount of time up the top as well, probably a good idea to take a jacket or a jumper or something because it got a little bit chilly just when she stopped moving so much. But uh, man, that is a cool walk and awesome view. And I tell you what, it's that effort that you put into the climb that makes it so much more worth it when you get up there. So we're going to head off now. Um, probably going to head towards the coast not 100% sure where we're going to go just yet uh, it's only like I said 11.15 so we've got a couple of hours and uh, see what happens so uh, let's go for a drive so we just got down to Dillon Bay which is just outside Burma Bay and uh, going to lower some of these tyre pressures down just for some of the sandy tracks so I think we're going to get uh, a bit further down on the track so uh, let's lower these pressures down and see what's around here There we have it. Tire pressures are leveled down. Went down to about uh, 18 to 20 psi straight up. I can see the track gets a bit sandy, so we'll uh, also chuck it just up, chuck the center diff lock in as well. So we got all four, four wheels with relatively even power, and we'll uh, see what this track's like. So there we have it, full drive down to a place called Beach. It's a pretty small little bay, protected from the wind. You can see behind me you've got this big sort of uh, mountain range all the way around. So it's all protected from the wind here. You've got this awesome beach. And you've only got one other person all the way down the other end. Otherwise we've got this place to ourselves. So uh, pretty sure this is where I'm gonna camp tonight. Um, normally you can't down the other end where those guys are, but we should be high enough here to set up the tent for one night. You can see the watermark just here this sand is very soft you can see from my attempts to turn around but otherwise this place is just awesome and we have been so lucky so lucky with this weather it's another perfect day it's low 20s no wind down here on the beach yeah there's a few flies but it is just perfect weather for beach so I'm gonna uh, set a bit of a uh, cam get some lunch on the go and I might even go for a bit of a swim see how we go been chilling out for the last few hours it's 
4 p.m. now. I mean, it looks a little bit later than it is just because the sun there is blocked by this mountain range behind us. But I tell you what, I could just sit here for hours staring at that ocean. And the fact that we get to camp on the beach tonight, wake up in the morning and see that, it's gonna be something special. So I tell you what, pretty happy, perfect weather, perfect temperature, perfect beach. We've got it pretty well. Just because we're camping doesn't mean we got to rough it. It's going to be a pretty early night tonight. It's only about five o'clock, but I am absolutely knackered after that hike up Bluff Knoll. So we're going to have an early dinner. Tonight we've got some, uh, some pasta and sauce, some hot pasta and sauce that we've cooked up on the uh, stove here. We've got some uh, rough steak with mint and rosemary. We'll have that with a couple bits of butter bread. And uh, we're looking good. So we're headed to bed for an early night after a big day, but not before watching an awesome display by the starry night sky. Thanks for watching part one of the great southern adventure. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to be notified of part two. Here's a bit of a preview. Waking up to this view this morning was just unbelievable. I had the, uh, the canvas open on the tent, sun came through at about 5.30 and uh, just woke up to this view here. It was absolutely perfect. Tide got pretty close to camp, so where these footprints are sort of, uh, it's only a few metres away. I think it's, what, 9.30 at the moment. It's nice just to relax. I have some nice hot brekkie on the, uh, on the beach. That sand was a lot softer than I thought it was gonna be, and we went straight down as soon as we tried to take off. We get this nice, fresh water source coming down from this range behind us. So now it's time to see if we can get this cruiser up and out of this track. Now from all accounts this track can be a little bit hard to get out of. We'll be the second car up this track today. Don't think the camera ever does those angles justice. A few more pin shots for sure. The area around here, just this whole south section of WA from Albany through to Esperance and beyond is uh, just such a nice place to explore. Why not show you around the camp setup that I've got set up today and uh, show you exactly how I camp when I go solo camping by myself.